What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to be improvising a shoegaze album cover design and it's going to look like this. I'm going to show you how I do everything from start to finish. Let's get started. So the cool thing is about shoegaze album covers is that they really can look however you want them to look. They don't have to look a certain way. However, some of the classic um, cover designs, you know, My Bloody Valentine, um, you know, like Th things like that. That's really the only one I can think of off the top of my head, but it's usually these very hazy motion driven looking prints, but you also have things like Slow Dive's uh, self-titled album that has, you know, like a very minimalist kind of art, uh, like a line art style design. And that's kind of what, uh, again, that's kind of going to be what I'm going for today. I found this image on Unsplash and I thought, or I'm sorry, not Unsplash, Pexels, um, really good site for finding free images. So I'm going to use this as my base image. And I'm gonna go for that that kind of line art, like that kind of hand-drawn type of quality here. And just in case you're wondering, uh, I have set this up at 12 and a half by 12 and a half, because that's what vinyl um, uh, sleeves come in. Uh, so that's what I'm, I'm gonna be setting it up as. And as far as achieving the effect, it's gonna be fairly simple to do that. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to threshold right here. So we're just gonna put a threshold uh, layer on that. And that automatically you know, turns it to black and white and just simplifies everything. So I'm gonna play around with this a little bit. I think that 128 is a little bit strong. So I'm gonna get probably right around here so you can still see a lot of those details um, in both of these girls' faces. So I'm gonna turn it, no, I think I'm gonna play around maybe 115. I think 115 is good. Let me take a look at 110 again. Okay, 115 kind of gives a little bit more, a um, little bit more detail in there. So I'm gonna stick with 115, and um, I would actually like for their heads to be a little bit closer together. So, and when whenever you do a threshold effect like this, it makes that image a lot easier to work with. Um, and I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. Typically, you would typically you would need to worry about what's going on in the background uh, of your subject, but we don't have to worry about that here because the background is just black. So that's pretty awesome. So I just selected uh, just selected her, and I'll just show you my marching ants here. So I selected her. I'm going to move her up a little bit to about right here, and I'm going to use my blending modes to um, let's see. We'll probably do like a uh, lighten right there and then we'll, uh, then all we have to do here is just reselect her again and fill that with black and then we'll bring this back okay so that way she's uh, she's she's a little bit closer I wanted their heads to be a little bit closer together okay so now we can just take the background in, in our paintbrush tool and just paint out some of these white uh, white spots that I don't want That's on the wrong layer. There we go. Okay. So now what I want to do is we've got this we've got this straight line going across here, and I don't want that. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab both of these layers. I'm gonna go ahead and merge them together, and I'm gonna enlarge them just a little bit more. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't matter if you enlarge or or if you reduce that threshold layer is still there. So whatever is beneath it, it's gonna it, it's still gonna apply that filter. So we can enlarge and we can reduce without having to worry about any kind of uh, without having to worry about losing clarity. Okay, so I like this um, uh, as the base, but I kind of have this vision of what I'm wanting. I would like to, uh, for some reason, I just think bubbles would look really cool on top of this. So I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna go get some bubbles. And what I want is I want some nice large bubbles. So, and um, and I don't want a whole lot of them. I just want maybe a few um, that I can go in and then just kind of replace here and there. So let's see what they've got. There's not a whole lot of like large bubbles. Well, okay, here we go. We've got something like this. Let's try this. And hopefully this is a nice large 
version of bubbles. Okay, well that's at 66%, but we'll see what happens. So pasting it underneath that threshold layer automatically applies the threshold to um, all of the layers that are underneath it, unless you clip it to a certain layer. So this is what I'm wanting. And I think what I'll do is we can enlarge right here and I'm gonna change this blending mode to screen. So that way it perfectly overlays with, uh, with our background. Now what's cool about this is, you know, like I do like the configuration right there, but I'm gonna hold down option and drag it over. And I might do, maybe not flip horizontal, but I'll do 180 degrees uh, rotate there. And then maybe rotate it a little bit more. So that way it doesn't look like I duplicated, you know, duplicated the layers. So I'll do the same thing here. A lot of design is just, it, it's, it's actually, um, it's kind of kind of similar to doing magic you know you you're just performing illusions making it look like you um, make it look like you didn't do something that you actually did so um, rotating is uh, rotating really comes in handy for things like that all right so we'll get rid of the bubbles uh, here that um, that are obvious uh, like you know that are obvious that they've been cut off in some way where are, you know what, I think that's that, I think that's not a bubble, that's actually part of her ear. Okay, good. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut out some of the bubbles that are covering their faces. So they don't necessarily have to cover the face. If this were a photograph image that we're going for, um, then I would probably leave those there because you want that dimension um, to show that the bubbles are, are, you know, kind of laying on top of them but that's not what we're going for here. I don't want to I don't want to obstruct their faces. So really just kind of getting some of these bubble layers and you know, I'm not a real I'm not a big fan of what's going on right here. It kind of makes it look like a mistake, so I'm just going to kind of cut that out just a little bit leave it a little bit ambiguous okay I think that this is looking good I'm gonna go ahead and merge these together and then change that back to screen just so I just so they have only got uh, one layer that I'm working with for the bubbles <clears throat> grab a drink real quick and the next thing that I want to do is now that I've got this basically how, how I want it to look I am going to add some effects uh, to the top of it, okay? One thing that I might do here, and I'll zoom in on this because you always want to be careful when you're doing uh, stuff like this. Do a blur and a Gaussian blur, and it's going to take some of that detail away, but I think that that may be a good thing. Sometimes it is. Let's see what it looks like when we do that, okay? So we'll leave it at 50. You know what? I think I'm gonna leave it. I think I'm gonna leave it without the Gaussian blur. So I have a couple of ideas for um, some, uh, like some kind of a texture, like a maybe a maybe a paper texture that will lay on top of this. And I think this is a good one because this has a lot of different uh, has a lot of different details in it. So we'll lay this on top. scale it all the way up. I'm going to go ahead and desaturate it so that we don't have any of that color um, affecting it. And let's go ahead and ch change the blending mode. I think I'm going to try difference first and then invert it. That way we see we see some of that see some of that texture that's still there. Uh, I think that that looks good. I think I actually like the rota the, ro the rotated version of that. Okay, so that's cool. Um, Oops, there we go. Now, if uh, if I wanted to, I would probably, um, I typically don't add uh, color, but if uh, like to, to art pieces like this, but if I were to do so, maybe like, um, maybe a really soft blue. 
and then go down to color or um, there, there's different ways you could do it like you, you can actually color the the background this is interesting that's pretty cool you could easily do something like that um, you don't want it to be you don't want it to be too harsh of an effect when you put the color on I like this actually really really nice subtle uh, blue right there that's that's really cool and so is that lighter color is nice color dodge is nice I don't know I'm think I'm thinking I may lean towards keeping it black and white but we'll see what happens when we uh, okay so we've cycled through all of the all of the blending modes I think this is really interesting this is not typically something that I would do but let's see what happens when we invert and just append uh, and just pin it to that okay I'm not really a big fan of that um, this is pretty cool I'm gonna actually try a couple of things here so let's clip that there and let's just adjust these layers or the these levels I'm sorry bring this down maybe bring this up a little bit Okay, I think that's interesting. And then what's really cool about the layer styles is, is uh, or the layers, you can actually go in um, and change the colors. You could do something like red, do something like orange, or maybe this, uh, that's pretty cool. I like that green or greenish teal color. The purple is really cool. Let's see, let's check out I think I'll oh man I like I like both of them a lot but I think that I like this one better I think I'm gonna leave it at this kind of purple and it kind of gives the it kind of gives the white areas a little bit of a green feel it's pretty cool um, I think that I'm gonna try looking at maybe something else to give it maybe a little bit more maybe a little bit more texture let's take a look at this paper texture this on top and again I'm gonna go ahead and desaturate that as well I think this might give it a little bit more of that texture that I'm looking for but I think it's coming out a little bit too strong so I'll take that down to 50% and I'm gonna add a layer of grain this is something that I just like to do I do it with almost all of my projects just to give it a little bit more dimension so 75 you know and also make it look like that it was an actual printed piece of paper and I'll do a slight vignette negative 20 should be good I think and we'll set that to overlay and I'll zoom in all the way so you can see what it looks like with and without so it's very subtle, but you know, subtlety is key. It um, it, it really does make it look like, um, uh, like a printed sheet of paper. So I think this is cool. Um, now I just got to figure out who this is for. <laughs> so, um, I think that I'm gonna go with the. Let's see. You know what? Um, let's just go with. Let's go with my bloody Valentine. I've already got the font here. I was playing around with um, with a my bloody Valentine fake um, fake uh, cover earlier, so I'll just I'll just go with that since I already have the font loaded up. And I am gonna go ahead and do something that I should have done at the start of the video, but it's fine. I can do it now. I can add a guide layout there. Probably make this white. And I'll show you um, a, a really cool trick to um, kind of make it look like the text is part of the image without making it look like it's just sitting on top of the image. Because you definitely want to avoid that. You want everything to flow nicely together. So, my bloody Valentine. Maybe, maybe something like this where it's a little bit offset. It's pretty cool. All right, so what we're gonna do is uh, the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna send this back down a couple of layers so that way it looks like it's blending in with it. You know, like um, yeah. So I think that's good right there, and we'll go 
on this next step that I'll show you. We want to make sure that the whole thing is legible. So I think that probably right here is going to be the best place for it to be red. And we'll just kind of bring down the size of the type a little bit. Maybe I'll just go in and erase this part of this bubble right here so that way our text is nice and legible. <clears throat> so I like that. And then the next thing that we're going to do is I am going to rasterize this type and add a Gaussian blur to it. So what this does is it actually, as you can see around the edges, it softens up those edges and it makes it look like it's that the text is part of the artwork itself and still has all of those um, has all of those layer styles that we added. All right, so this is the finished piece and I'm pretty happy with it. I love the colors here. I love the um, I love the artwork in general, um, and then also the the bubbles and all of the effects that we've got laying on top of it. I think it looks really, really cool. I think it looks maybe a little, a little more like something Slow Dive would do, or maybe some other bands. Um, can't really think of any off the top of my head right now. But you know, at the same time, you still have all of these really cool. Uh, harsh lines, all this nice uh, contrast, uh, contrasting things. It kind of looks like um, glider a little bit, but um, but you can definitely, you know, it would still pass, I think, for a My Bloody Valentine um, album. And let's do this just so I can say I did it. We'll just add. I'll just go with uh, their their pink, uh, their reddish pink color over the entire thing. Let's see what that looks. Oh, that's really harsh, but you could actually go into the levels and change that around um, and, uh, get, and give that some more contrast. But yeah, that's pretty cool. That's that's really cool. I love those like those uh, real retro color vibes there. You could do subtract, divide the color. OK, yeah. So this is like, you know, kind of calling back to Loveless a little bit but I think that I'll just leave it at that. So there it is. Thanks a lot for joining me today. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe down below and it'll keep more videos like this coming to you. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.